Not Harrison Ford. Getting handsy, that's a Wookiee mistake. And of course, don't pull it out. What? Today, we are headed to a galaxy far, far away, breaking down and reacting to all of the action-packed medical scenes and forceful injuries from Star Wars. Let's dive right in. Oh, so cool. Oh my gosh, so look at the skin. If it's just red, like a sunburn, fine, that's first degree burn. If it's red with a blister, second degree burn. And then if it actually turns more kind of white, then there's no blood supply going to that area. No blood. And then obviously if something is charred, it turns black. There's even a respiratory apparatus component. We don't have these kind of masks at the hospital, but we do have different types. We have little prongs that go in your nose. It's called a nasal cannula. We have a mask that goes over your mouth, but it's clear so we can see. There are different ones that you could put on a non-rebreather. That's the one that has the bag. Oh. Whoa. Cut in half with a lightsaber. Oh my gosh. I've said this before about people getting cut in half. The likelihood that you're going to survive is minimal because you're going to bleed out and die so fast because your aorta and the inferior vena cava are sliced in half. Oh, I do see people that come in with missing parts of their bodies. You need to, if you can, bring those pieces that have been separated from your body with you to the hospital. Rarely, but sometimes you can actually reattach them. Oh man, amputation to where it could possibly be replanted. It cauterized probably all the vessels, not bleeding out, and so it was so smooth. Reattaching the bone, easy, right? You can use hardware to do that. But the biggest thing is actually getting all the vessels and the nerves to be able to reattach. Landed perfectly, cushioned his head, thank goodness, so he didn't get whiplash injury. And you can see the arm is not bleeding out. We use machines at the hospital, it's called the Bovie knife, to actually cut and cauterize small blood vessels and muscles. Oh, look at that. Goodbye hands. Would have been super cool if they actually showed the bones and you can see different colorations of the tissues, the nerves and muscles. Oh! All the question when you got your head amputated off your body based on the guillotine, are you conscious? How long are you conscious for? Is there muscle movement? Are you aware? Again, you can't study this stuff. You'll have some non-specific firing of your nerve action potentials that might move muscles, but is there a higher level thinking? Maybe one or two seconds and then that's it. Oh! You have a massive puncture wound all the way through the body. What are we going through mid-abdomen? Intestines, the omentum, maybe the spinal cord and the bones of the spinal column. What's gonna kill you is bleeding out and the cauterization of a lightsaber not stopping the blood vessel. You'd have to have a little bit longer to where you actually bleed out. Oh. <laughs> That's a Mandalorian type helmet, I believe. Goodbye. Goodbye. These lightsabers are pretty scary, pretty dangerous. Do we have this stuff in medicine? I know that like an ophthalmologist's office will use different types of lasers. Laser for retinal detachments. We don't have too many like plasma cutters that I know of at what I do for a living. Whoa! Not Harrison Ford. Why? Big massive puncture wound to the abdomen. Didn't die in like two seconds. Good job, okay, they're improving. One, he left the blade in there. It was probably cauterizing. Same with any impaled object. If it's still in there, it actually might be tamponading or preventing the blood from pouring out. Can any of you guys do the Chewbacca voice? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> When he fell, he probably didn't die yet. He probably became hypotensive, meaning that the blood pressure dropped. Typically your heart rate goes up really high. And then what could happen is you then decrease the heart rate as you lose a lot of blood. You decrease perfusion of blood to your brain and you pass out. 
Good, appropriate, like screaming in pain. Sometimes when you get injured and you don't realize like the pain until like maybe like one or two seconds later, our bodies are so interesting. This is probably almost equivalent to lightning, which is direct current. Things in our house are alternating currents, so DC versus AC. DC currents will actually cause you to have a blast injury. It's like, phew, gone. <laughs> We have blood. The newer ones, we didn't because the blades cauterized and they took that idea. But here, it doesn't look like they're doing that. If there's a lot of bleeding, you gotta make sure that you get the bleeding to stop. Direct pressure to the area that's bleeding is your number one. Oh, I love that, I love it. I mean, I feel bad for him. Dominant hand amputations are tough because you have to learn to use your other. That's one issue. Obviously, the mental component of having something amputated takes a big hit. It is emotionally tolling on an individual when they lose a part of them. Here. Smash your face onto bar countertop, maybe concrete. Things you worry about is fracturing any of the bones of the face, obviously, but you also have to worry about the neck because of the extension. You can actually have an internal decapitation if you sever your spinal cord. Punch up into the axilla. There's something called your brachial plexus, which is a bunch of nerves that actually come through the armpit, so it can actually cause a lot of pain. You're probably tearing a bunch of muscles, tendons, and ligaments. Ouch. Ouch. Body cut in half. We can't help that guy, as you guys know. Not much to do for somebody cut in half and they don't show up to the hospital. So people always ask if the pain is so bad, do you go into shock? Typically not. When we talk about shock in the medical world, it has to do with kind of perfusing organs and whatnot. You can become altered to where you may not feel much, but it's a much bigger pathway than just like the pain so great that you're in shock. Lord Vader, the fleet has moved down to flight speed and we're preparing to... Oh. You have failed me for the last time. You are in command now, Admiral Piet. Thank you, Lord Vader. Using the force. We'll use the force. To close the airway, basically. Not being able to speak. Probably collapsing onto the vocal cords. Literally two cords in your neck here. But it's also like the gatekeeper to your airway. You have about five to eight minutes of oxygen. It just depends on your ability to hold your own breath, so to speak. If you have a lot of other medical issues, it might be a little bit faster. This is awesome. This was so cool to do. It was entertaining for me. New injuries, obviously a lot of amputations going on here. Also, I made fast acting health supplements with you in mind. No matter what the issue, I got you covered. Check out Life Happens. You take them only when you need them. If you guys enjoyed this and you're crazy, awesome, wonderful fans of Star Wars, let me know if you want me to do more. And as always, check out this playlist right here. Binge watch as much as you can. And make sure you turn on your bell notifications, hit that like button, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and stay healthy, my friends.